Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Carrie's Gardening Channel. So, um, we're in March and 2018, and I was recently asked to show you what my growing light setups look like. So, here's one of them here. This is made out of oak, and you can see my lights they clip up into here and these shelves up top here are adjustable so like as my plants continue to grow if we run out of light and chain we can move the light up higher so what I do is um, for my light height um, you want to keep like you don't want your plants touching the light so you want to make sure you keep enough room in between them because if your plants touch the light it will actually burn the leaves uh, I did a video on my uh, begonia seedlings where they actually touched the light and it burnt the leaves and this one here it's actually a double light fixture thing where I have another light over here because it's wide enough to do that and in between here because I'm getting enough light with both lights, I have stuff in between here as well. And it's getting enough light that it's staying nice and short for me. So I'm getting double out of my lights. Or triple, I should say, sorry. I'm getting triple out of my lights because of the way that they're set up. And I'll show you the other side here. And like on this side, a lot of the stuff is growing um, faster. So we keep putting the lights up every day pretty much because we don't want our plants to touch the light bulbs. And I'll show you down here. Hold on a moment. You can see I have little coolies. That's the colored leaves, the colored leaf plants back there growing. And because everything is getting enough light with these double lights set up, um, it's growing nice and short so I'll show you my next shelf down and this one here is set up the same way it's double lights and the shelves are movable so when I run out of chain to go up um, we can just move uh, the shelves up one more notch and in here it's the same way I have double or triple sorry things growing in between because I have both lights set up and they're reflecting enough light together that my stuff's staying nice and short. So um, now the lights that I'm using, they're fluorescent lights. They're on for 14 hours a day and they're on an automatic timer. So they'll automatically shut themselves off. I don't even have to uh, come down and turn them off, which I highly recommend that. And the light bulbs that I use are daylight bulbs. That's pretty much mostly what I'm using. I have used sunshine bulbs already. They work too. My preference is the daylight ones. Um, now sometimes, like, these plants here are exceptionally tall. So I'm actually going to trim these because they just keep growing up into the light. I think I'm just going to trim them so they stay nice and short. I don't think I'm going to move them. What we did down here on the bottom, the very bottom, is, sorry about the lightning, it's a little, we put one of those uh, new uh, flir, the LED shop lights in. And again, it has the day length, or the daylight bulbs in it. And my taller plants grow down here because we can move this up as well and um, I also have a fan running that's why you see the leaves blowing because you want air circulation in your growing area uh, it helps like get your fresh air moving around because your plants they produce oxygen so they take in the carbon dioxide and they put out the oxygen and if you don't have like your airflow, your air can get kind of like stagnant for them and they won't get that fresh air that they need. And then you can get other issues like if you happen to overwater them, um, it can cause different issues like edema. 
and we don't want to have any issues with that. I had a little bit of an issue with that, so we got the fan going, and we got some more light form, because these were just way too tall for my other box that they were growing in. So I'll show you one of my other boxes over here. So this is one of my other growing boxes. Um, now this one here, it, it used to be a plant cart, and we took foil insulation. Now this isn't foil insulation that you can buy like in the store. This is different. Um, I'll leave my email address below if you're interested in purchasing any of this. Um, this is what I put in my grow box and I also use them for like germination boxes for when I germinate some of my seeds that require um, a higher germination rate. So this is one of my boxes, and again, um, we have where we can adjust the lights. They're on chains, but um, this one here has a height. Uh, um, it can only go so high. So when the plants continuously keep growing taller, we have to move them then to other areas. So this is my other grow box. And again, it's the same type of light setup. They're on for 14 hours a day. The fluorescent lights, the daylight bulbs, um, and they're on the automatic timer so I don't even have to fool with them. Uh, one thing with these kinds of setups is you want to have something like under your plants or you want to move them when you water them. Uh, so your water doesn't run everywhere. Now some of these you'll notice I don't have the light right on top of the seedlings. Um, because of the foil, it's reflecting the light back. So it's keeping the stuff nice and short for us. And um, some plants don't require as much light like the coles here. I don't have to grow them right up at the light. I found that they stay shorter even when you don't have them like right at the light. So you can see different, there's a, an eggplant growing under there and there's some um, lovage right there between the, behind the begonia there. And those I have closer to the light because I want to keep them nice and short. So I just have to keep an eye on them to make sure that they're not going to touch the light. When they get ready to touch the light, you got to move them down. I recommend moving them down before they're ready to touch the light because sometimes they grow that quickly that they just get to the light before you even get a chance to move them. So, and these boxes in here, being that this one is insulated, it's warmer in here than it is like in the open box. So, like some of your plants that don't like to be um, as cool or cooler, uh, you could put them in like a box like this. Now, there's some plants that they will not grow in these types of boxes. It just gets too warm for them. So, and that, um, I've kind of learned that over the years of doing this. And I was transplanting stuff today, so stuff's kind of out, like, scattered in the area. Sorry about that, and I'm watering some different things. But um, one of the advantages to a setup like this, where this one here is kind of built up on blocks, I really don't recommend doing that. Um, the blocks can fall over sometimes, and you will reach where you can't go any higher. But um, for what I was growing under it, I kind of couldn't put it elsewhere at the time and I use the excess light that it puts off to um, start like my begonia tubers and my ornamental sweet potato vines and then um, I have this light back here that's for uh, my overwintering stuff and it also gives light to my onion seedlings here which these grow um, I don't let my plants sit right on the concrete floor. Uh, I found not to do that. I usually always have something under them. 
So that's how I do mine. These are onion seedlings and again we have other different various bulbs starting to sprout and these hang from the ceiling. Uh, it's not the best setup to have them hang from the ceiling like this. Um, I would prefer, you know, maybe a shelf or something a little different, but it's working. I mean, you can see our seedlings here. These are some onion seedlings. And as some of your plants get larger, they don't need as much of the intense light as the little seedlings do. So you can kind of move them. Like this one here, it's kind of trying to grow towards the light. So I'm just going to spin it here real quick. And these are growing really nice for us. This is uh, one of our Walla Walla onions here. And they're forming the nice bulbs on them for our onions. So they're fine the way that they are because I needed the light for some other stuff for some of the smaller onions. And they also give light to some of the plants back here that wouldn't fit in that box back there. And again, these are all on for 14 hours a day and they automatically shut themselves off then. And the fan running, uh, I have it on low right now. Um, sometimes I do turn it up like on high or I'll turn it on medium. It depends on how much um, airflow I feel, you know, flying around. We do have other fans running down in the basement. But um, over in this area, it's kind of uh, off some from where the normal fans are. So... I just put some extra fans in to run. Right now we have one running. I would prefer two, um, but the other one I can't get to right now. So this one here is doing fine. I can feel it even over at the other growing area over there. So I'll show you uh, an overview of the whole thing and then uh, I'll end the video. So you can see under here real quick some of the other stuff growing and it's getting enough light because it's definitely growing i mean these plants under here they're doing very well we're actually probably gonna have to put this light up soon and i got the begonias over there blooming they were some seedlings that i planted back in december and this is a pretty good sized flat of peppers here and they're just some of the peppers i have some over in the other box um they could, uh, they're still short enough to stand in there. And you can see some lobelia blooming under here. That's a beautiful blue flower back there. And checking your plants, uh, you really want to check your plants a lot. Like you want to check them to make sure you don't have any bugs or any type of disease or anything like that going on. Um, you really want to pay like attention. You don't want your stuff to, uh, dry out and then wilt and you don't want to overwater it so this is the whole overview of the growing room area and we have more over here and then we have the lights behind there hold on a moment where you can see the lights back here. Now, one thing you want to do is, like, wherever you have your power cords and stuff, you want to make sure that they're not going to get wet because that's going to be disastrous. Water and electricity, they do not get along. So, you want to make sure that you keep your electrical stuff far enough away so that you don't have any issues or any problems. So, this is my growing area setup. And this is what works for me. I didn't start out with anything this big. Um, I actually started out with that back box back there that has my overwintering stuff growing in it. And then I just kind of added as I went. Um, one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to start too big with uh, growing stuff indoors. Um, because you don't want to get frustrated and you don't want, you know, if something happens or if something goes wrong, it's a learning process and experience. And um, it's not something that I recommend just jumping all into. You definitely want to start small. 
I really recommend starting small. But this is what works for me. And uh, I was asked to show it, so I'm showing it here. So if you like my video, please like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, you can leave them below and I'll try and answer them for you. Please don't forget to hit that little notification button. I'll tell you when I put a new video on. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a nice day. Bye.